Hi everyone, my name is Adi and uh, I'm still a PhD student at the SOREC lab. Uh, I would like to start by thanking the IMP and the Max Bernstein Foundation uh, for selecting my work for the Bernstein Award. I'm really truly honored and excited about this, so uh, thank you very much. And yes, I am keeping you in the uh, immune system uh, subject, but I'm going to talk today about the immune system of bacteria. In the SOREC lab, we're interested in the interactions between bacteria and the viruses that infect them, called bacteriophages, or phages in short. These are these weird little entities, alien-like entities that you can see here. And phages are found everywhere. Bacteria are constantly confronted with the threat of phage infection. And these competitive interactions lead to an arms race, where bacteria need to constantly defend themselves in order to survive, but these viruses need to overcome these defenses in order to propagate. And this arms race leads to a diversity in defense mechanisms. And some of the well-known mechanisms of defense in bacteria are uh, the restriction modification systems and the adaptive immune system of bacteria, the CRISPR-Cas systems. But these systems do not defend against all phages and are not found in all bacteria. So we were wondering, are there any other immune mechanisms out there in bacterial genomes? And why do we care? Why do we care about bacterial immune systems? Well, first of all, these systems have a huge impact on the evolution of bacteria and phages. But also, they have great potential in therapeutics and biotechnology. And the discovery of new complex immune systems in the past have led to revolutions in biology. So for example, we were talking about restriction enzymes in the 70s. So restriction modification systems gave us these restriction enzymes, which we use in the lab all the time, and revolutionized genetic engineering. And CRISPR-Cas, of course, revolutionized genome engineering. And this is not only in bacteria, this is not only in prokaryotes, but also eukaryotic immune systems. So for example, RNAi is used for gene silencing and antibodies. We use them all the time in the lab, right? But they're also used as biological drugs to treat cancer, for example. So we were very interested in finding new such immune systems. But how does one start looking for new defense systems? Well, luckily for me, it's been shown that defense systems tend to cluster in bacterial genomes, forming what is termed defense islands. So for example, you can see here a segment of a genome where you have four different defense systems right next to each other. And different genomes, you can see different combination of defense systems very close by. And we hypothesized in the lab that these unknown operons around these defense systems are also defense systems themselves. And indeed, previous work in the lab showed that this is the case. So my goal was to systematically search for new defense systems using this idea of defense islands. So I created this pipeline. What it does, it looks for conserved operons that are found in different bacteria, different genomes, next to different defense systems. These operons would be candidate defense systems that we could later verify experimentally that they protect against these viruses. And I analyzed about 40,000 microbial genomes and then found a list, a huge list of new defense systems. We found hundreds of these systems. It actually, we found too much, we couldn't handle it. We had to uh, apply all these strict filters in order to narrow down the list. And we have about 1,500 new defense systems uh, right now. And this is still a lot to verify experimentally. So actually, this is where the whole SOREC lab uh, chipped in. We had a defense system day uh, where each lab member uh, got a basket of defense systems, analyzed them, and we prioritized the interesting systems that we want to verify and study experimentally. So you might recognize some uh, faces in there. Until today, verified over 50 new defense systems. So we basically have a platform for discovery of defense systems in bacteria, and the number keeps on uh, growing. 
And the systems that we did look into more deeply, we found have interesting new concepts in bacterial immunity. So for example, we found the CBAS system that uses a small molecule signal to activate the defense. We later found that this is a reoccurring theme in bacterial immunity, and we found other systems that use other signals, but the theme remains the same. The big surprise about this system was that this system is actually the evolutionary origin for the human immune pathway, the CGAS sting pathway, which induces interferon. So uh, this is kind of an interesting connection to the eukaryotic immunity. Another example, we found the prokaryotic viperins, which produce diverse antiviral molecules. And we think that we can harness these molecules in order to produce antiviral drugs that we so need uh, in recent years. And my personal favorite, bacterial retrons, which we mentioned before. The first thing that I asked myself and everyone else asked me when I talk about bacterial retrons is, what is a retron, right? <laughs> so uh, retrons were discovered in the 80s. There are these weird genetic elements composed of a non-coding RNA and a reverse transcriptase. The non-coding RNA falls into this very specific structure. And from, uh, from the two prime of this conserved guanosine, the reverse transcriptase starts reverse transcribing the other part of the RNA, forming this, again, weird uh, hybrid of RNA and cDNA that are covalently linked, basically branched from the same nucleotide. And for many years, the function of these molecules in the cell was unknown. Overexpression, deletion, nobody could find any uh, observed phenotype. So I was very happy to find retrons within defense islands. I found their reverse transcriptases, I found their non-coding RNA, and that was very exciting for me. And what we also found is that these retrons are not standalone elements, they're not just a reverse transcriptase and a non-coding RNA, but they're actually part of multi-gene systems with genes that are very familiar to us from other defense systems. So we decided to check whether these retrons are actually part of defense systems. And what we do is we clone these systems into E. coli, infect it with an array of phages, and look for reduced infectivity, usually in a plaque assay, and that to us would mean defense. So we took a bunch of these retrons, mainly from E. coli, but also from other bacteria. We tested them against phages and found that most of them confer defense against at least one phage. So I think we can say that the retron mystery is solved. But we wanted to know more. We wanted to know the mechanism. So we dug a little bit deeper into it, and we found that retrons work through abortive infection. And what does that mean? It means if a bacterium has the system in its genome and a phage infects this bacterium, before the phage is able to replicate and finish its replication cycle, the cell would commit suicide, and then the phage would be excluded from the phage pool, the bacterial colony would survive. You don't want to just commit suicide with, the, with no reason. You want it to be very highly regulated, and we wanted to know what triggers this process. And we came up with this very interesting model that when you have the retron defense system in the cell, when the phage infects the cell, usually phages, they bring inhibitors of the first lines of defense in the cell. So the phages bring inhibitors of some central immune hub in the cell. And this inhibition, whenever the phage inhibits the first line of defense, this inhibition is sensed by the retron and the retron activates the defense, basically kills the cell, and the colony survives. So the retrons do not sense phage infection directly, but rather sense the inhibition of the first line of defense. As if I would have an alarm system in my house, and if someone tempers with this alarm system, then I would uh, trigger like uh, some kind of a second line of defense that would maybe 
I don't know, blow up the house. <laughs> and this concept reminded us of, I don't know if we have some GMI friends uh, in here today, but reminded us of an interesting concept in plant immunity, where some immune components in plants guard key cellular components, and they don't sense the pathogen itself, but rather sense whatever action or effect the pathogen has on uh, these key components. And this is another interesting link to us between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic immune system. So I would like to conclude. We, found, we formed a platform for discovery. We found hundreds of new defense systems in bacteria. And now that we have this global view of the defense systems in bacteria, we can start asking questions about the pa pan-immune system of bacteria. How does this system interact? Do they have synergistic effect? Are there systems that cannot come together? Are there systems that actually cooperate? So these are interesting questions uh, for us. And I like the idea of functional genomics solving decades old mystery of the retrons just by having a phenotype and then looking at the genomes, uh, we can uh, uh, solve uh, interesting mysteries. And another personal favorite of mine are the uh, conceptual and actual homologies uh, between eukaryotic and prokaryotic immunity. And with that, I would like to thank Rotem for being an amazing mentor, Oden Avigai for working on the retrons with me, Azita and Sarah for working on the big screen with me, and the entire SOREC lab for taking part of this project and being such a great group, and uh, the Rothschild Foundation for supporting me throughout my uh, PhD. And thank you for listening. <laughs>